Hi, I'm Alex Spencer, and this is a tutorial for Tuts Plus. In this tutorial, I will demonstrate the five things you must know when making a leap from Windows to Mac. Converting from the Windows to Mac ecosystems can be a bit of a challenge. Some things will feel familiar, but many will not. Even the most basic of tasks, like closing applications, has very small but very noticeable differences. In this tutorial, I will show you how to find and open applications, how to properly close those applications, the Mac OS dock, the powerful spotlight search feature, and the dashboard. Let's get started. To launch a new application in Windows, I will go to the lower left part of the screen, click on the Start menu, then All Programs, and then find the application folder I'm looking for, and launch the application. Whereas on a Mac, if I'd like to launch that application, I'll go to the Finder, Applications folder, find the application within the list of apps on my computer, and double click on it. Now suppose I'd like to close that application completely. Coming from a Windows background, you might imagine that I would look for a red X in the top right corner of the screen. In fact, in a Mac, the X is in the top left corner of the screen. Also worth noting is clicking this button will not entirely close the application. I know the application is still running because I see the name of the application here in the toolbar. I also see a white dot below it on my dock. To close the application completely, I need to go to the name of the application in the top left and then choose to quit the application. Or I can do the much easier shortcut of Command Q. I recommend learning the latter of the two. Properly closing applications you are not using will free up system resources and allow the apps you are using to run much faster. As a quick review, you will see that any application that is still currently running will most likely appear in your dock with a small white dot below it. As you can see here, I have Finder, OpenOffice, ScreenFlow, and VirtualBox currently running. VirtualBox is no longer needed, so I will click on the icon and then I will do a Command Q to close it down. ScreenFlow is the app I'm using to record this screencast, so I should probably leave that running. And OpenOffice is in use, but it's off camera on my secondary monitor. And as always, Finder is running. It's a core part of the Mac operating system. Besides showing me what applications I have open, the dock also acts as a bit of a shortcut bar. If I know I will use a particular application more than others, I can simply hop into my Applications folder, choose the application I'd like to bring down, click on it, and drag it down to the dock. When I let go, it's been pinned to the dock. Now every time I want to launch that application, I can simply click on that shortcut, and it fires right up. Again, if I want to close that application, Command Q, and it's gone. Later on, if I decide I'm not using the application as much, I can remove it from the dock by clicking and holding down on the icon until the menu appears, going to Options, and choosing Remove from Dock. Alternatively, I can also just drag the icon over to the trash can and it will be removed from the dock as well. It's important to note that removing applications from your dock does not remove or uninstall them from your Mac. It simply removes the shortcut to the application. Now that you understand how to open applications, close them, and better use your dock, let's take a look at Spotlight. Spotlight is the Mac's built-in search feature. Entire trainings could be devoted to all of its different uses, but for now, I will point out just a few. First, imagine I would like to find a document on my Mac conveniently labeled Hard to Find Document. I can't remember what folder I saved it to or where it is on my hard drive. Well, I can simply come up here to the top right corner of my Mac and click on the magnifying glass. That will launch Spotlight. I can start typing the name of the document, and you'll notice results already start to appear. As I continue to type, the results get better and better, and within just a couple of seconds, the top hit is hardtofinddoc.pdf. When I hit enter, the document launches, and I can see it right in front of me. This very concept doesn't just apply to documents, though. Suppose I have an application that's not on my dock that I'd like to launch, but I don't want to go to the trouble of coming all the way down to Finder, clicking on Applications, and scrolling through that long list until I find the application I'm looking for. I'd rather use Spotlight to quickly and easily launch it. To do so, I'm going to hold down the Command and Spacebar key to bring up Spotlight, type the name of the app I'm looking for, and hit Enter. It's that simple. As a review, I can use the Command Spacebar key as a shortcut to launch Spotlight, type the name of the app I'm looking for, and hit Enter to launch it. 
Now let's clear our screen by doing Command Q to close Twitter, Command Q to close Chrome, we'll select Preview and do a Command Q to close that as well, and come back to a nice clean desktop. And now that our desktop is clear, I'd like to show how Spotlight is a great way to search the internet. Suppose I'd like to find out what exactly a Bitcoin is. Well, I can do Command Space to bring up Spotlight and start typing what is a Bitcoin and arrow down to search the web for what is a Bitcoin. When I hit enter, my default web browser launches and immediately pulls up a search for what is a Bitcoin. All things considered, Spotlight is a great tool to put just about anything you need at your fingertips. Whether it be a missing document, an application you need to launch, or even a search on the internet, command space is all you really need to know. Last but not least, I'd like to show you around the dashboard. The dashboard can be accessed a multitude of different ways. On my MacBook Air, the shortcut is function F12. If you are using a trackpad or magic mouse though, a four finger swipe to the left will usually do the trick. Once there, I find a set of existing live widgets that show me the date, the time, the seven day weather forecast, and a calculator. By hitting the plus button in the lower left hand corner of the screen, I can add even more widgets, such as a tile game, or translation, or even a unit converter. If these aren't enough, I can click the More Widgets button to be taken to the Apple website that contains literally hundreds if not thousands of different widgets I can install on my dashboard. By installing these widgets and making the dashboard my own, I can really create a user experience that's customized to my needs. Change may not always come easy, and changing from a Windows to a Mac operating system is definitely a daunting thought. But thanks to this tutorial, now you will know how to find and open applications, properly close those applications, use your Mac OS dock, launch or find just about anything using the Spotlight feature, and enjoy a live dashboard with customized widgets just for you. Thank you for taking the time to watch this training. Once again, my name is Alex Spencer, and this has been a tutorial for Tuts Plus.